What's with that attitude? Who do you think allows you to live? I'm sorry. You are in the position of being my wife. So just shut up and do what you are told, you scum! How many times has it been like this? To be subjected to such abuse from a husband? Who should be an equal partner? Suddenly, we were happy at the beginning of our marriage. But when did things turn out like this? In the midst of already difficult days, the worst happened. My husband's infidelity was revealed. My heart was covered in a dark abyss, and sadness and anger surged simultaneously. Treating people conveniently, and then cheating on your spouse. Absolutely unforgivable. You remember this. I will pay back double for all the suffering I have suffered so far. My name is Ginger Green, and I'm 28 years old. I've been married to Mark for almost two years. Mark works for a company, headed by his father, and at the young age of 32, he already holds a high position. He is destined to become the next president, ensuring a promising future. Our encounter was nothing but destiny. I was working at a flower shop at the time, and had been standing in the store that morning to serve customers. Then, Mark showed up as a guest and approached me. Excuse me, I want to send flowers to my mother for her birthday. What do you recommend? If it's for a birthday, yes. Carnations are our classic choice, but they are often chosen for Mother's Day too. Sweet peas and roses are also popular. There are so many types, I'm not sure. I see. Oh, how about hydrangeas? They have a lovely meaning, symbolizing family bonds and patient love. Or something else? Gah! I'm sorry, I got carried away. No, go on. Listening to you talk doesn't seem boring at all. Saying this, he smiled modestly. In just a few minutes, I was struck by how gently he laughed. A complete change from the cool impression I had had of him before. After that day, he began to visit our store regularly. Each time, I shared my knowledge of flowers with him to the fullest. He always seems to enjoy listening, making me naturally happy as well. Two months after we met, something happened. He bought a bouquet of 12 roses. These 12 roses, also known as Darcy roses, have a tradition in Europe where men used to present 12 roses to their girlfriends. Each rose had meanings like affection and respect, symbolizing a pledge of all these feelings to the recipient, often used during proposals. While I was wrapping the bouquet, Mark confidently shared this knowledge. I knew that different numbers of roses had different meanings but I was surprised by how much he had researched. After finishing the wrapping, he handed the bouquet directly to me. In a state of confusion, I said, Huh? And he clearly stated, I like you. I want to marry you. Eh? What? Marriage? Um, even if you say that suddenly... What? Is there someone else? If there is... I will talk to them. No, there isn't. There's no one, but why so suddenly? If you don't like it, you don't have to accept it. But I really want you. Mark. At that moment, with no lover and feeling the pressure in front of friends quickly getting married, I might have been confused, but maybe this was fate. If someone loves me this much, I thought I could surely be happy. With that in mind, I accepted his confession and started dating. It seems he had marriage in mind from the beginning. As he quickly brought up the topic of marriage, I was fed up with my parents asking me every time I turned them down, is there anyone you want to go out with? Because of this, I readily accepted his offer. I was surprised when I heard that Mark was the next president of the company. 
but I was increasingly attracted to his unpretentious personality, the kind that would give his mother a bouquet of flowers on her birthday. However, I began to feel uneasy about my husband's behavior. The first red flag was about six months into our marriage. In a strangely irritated state, my husband came home and roughly threw his bag onto the sofa. Welcome back. What happened? As I inquired, he raised his voice. I just made a little mistake at work, and my old man got mad at me. Why the heck? Oh, really? But isn't it quite serious for your dad to get angry? Must have been something important. What? So you are saying I'm the one at fault? Oh, no, it's not that. I tried to laugh it off, but in the next moment, the TV remote came flying. The remote hit the wall, making a dull thud, and landed on the floor. Did my husband just throw the remote at me? Overwhelmed by fear, I collapsed on the spot, looking down at me with a cold stare. My husband uttered in a voice I'd never heard before. Don't get too carried away, okay? M mark Just because you managed to marry the future president, don't think you are safe. If you keep acting up, I will. W what are you saying? Why would you suddenly talk about throwing things away? I was just worried about you, Mark. Shut up! It doesn't mean anything for an incompetent person like you to worry about me. Got it? You're just my wife. Don't interfere with my work. Just shut up. This incident was the turning point, revealing my husband's true nature. Gradually, his verbal abuse became a daily routine. I've lost count of how many times I've heard words like good for nothing, stupid, and useless. Even now, after a year and a half of marriage, nothing has changed. I've become nothing more than a housekeeper, wearing the mask of a wife. Yet, the reason I have endured this marriage life is because of my in-laws. They treated me like their own daughter, especially my father-in-law, who has always seemed to want a daughter. He keeps in touch with me regularly. Just the other day, while doing household chores, I received a call from my father-in-law. Hello, this is Ginger. Oh, Ginger. Sorry to call out of the blue. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you both, mom and dad? We are doing great. My wife and I were thinking about going to lunch with you soon. Really? I'd love to join. Great to hear that. My heart naturally lightened at the sound of my father-in-law's happy voice. Upon sensing something, my father-in-law formally inquired, Ginger, are you getting along well with Mark? Um, yes. It's more like I'm lacking in some way. That's not true. Ginger, you're a well-raised young lady. We'll understand if we talk. I'm not sure about that. Ginger, if anything happens with Mark, feel free to consult with me. I promise to always support you. I may be Mark's father, but I'm also your father. If you are in trouble, I will definitely help you. Contact me anytime. Dad, touched by his kind words, I almost shed tears. Suppressing the rising tears, I thanked my father-in-law and ended the call. Dad, why did he bring this up now? Did I unintentionally reveal something in my voice? If I were to consult Mark's father about Mark's verbal abuse and Mark found out, just imagining it makes me shiver. For me, my husband has become a source of fear. One day, while cleaning my husband's room, I noticed a closet was half open. It seems the coat's hem got cold, causing a slight wrinkle in the coat. Should I take this to the dry cleaners? I'm planning to pick up dry cleaning anyway. As a precaution, 
I checked if there was anything in the coat pocket. Then, I found a piece of paper inside the pocket. What? What is this? It's a receipt from a dubious place, often visited by couples. The date indicates a stay a week ago for 12 hours. On that day, my husband claimed he had a sudden overtime and would stay at the company. In that moment, I collapsed to the floor. Never did I imagine that my own husband would be cheating. Mark, why? Why would he cheat? No matter how much verbal abuse he threw at me, I never doubted his love for me. At that time, he proposed with a bouquet of roses, and that gesture couldn't have been a lie. However, I can't forgive cheating. He betrayed me. Looking back, there were strange occurrences, sudden increase in overtime, constantly checking his phone, and a faint scent of soap despite supposedly him staying at the company. Now all those signs were clear evidence of infidelity. There's no room for leniency or consideration towards him anymore. This moment was when the trust I had built up for him crumbled. Unforgivable. After insulting people so much, he was cheating in secret? Just mocking others and quietly betraying me. But I won't just cry and accept it. I would definitely get revenge. From that day on, I decided to monitor my husband's behavior. I start following him when he leaves home, and after he disappeared to his office, I wait at the cafe near the entrance. Then, as expected, his lies became more and more obvious. Today, I will be working overtime and staying at the company. Such a message arrives, but he leaves promptly at the regular quitting time. Following him, I discover that he's meeting with a female colleague at the station two stops ahead. The two of them, arms entwined, head toward the location on the receipt. They spend the night together, and the next morning, as they emerged, they exchanged passionate kisses near the entrance. I continue to capture the whole affair with photos and videos. Regardless of it being for evidence, witnessing the scene of infidelity from a man I once loved is not a pleasant experience. After several weeks of observations, a substantial amount of evidence of the affair had accumulated. I waited for my husband to return to discuss it with him. I have something important to discuss. Sending that text, Mark returned home just past 11 p.m. What's this about? He opened his mouth with apparent annoyance, and I immediately broached the subject. Mark, you, are you cheating? Huh? What are you talking about all of a sudden? I know everything. Look, here's the evidence. I showed him the photos and videos I had collected on my phone. He briefly looked flustered, but quickly regained his composure. Huh? And what the big deal about this? What? Why are you acting so nonchalant? This is undeniable evidence of your affair. You just took these with your own phone, right? That's not evidence of anything. Ha ha ha. No way! You did have a relationship with another woman, didn't you? Oh well. If you're going that far, fine. It's over. Huh? At that, Mark took out the divorce form he had prepared in advance and thrust it in front of me. There you go. I will divorce you as you wish. Just get out quickly. Wait. The conversation isn't over yet. I cheated because you're not attractive. Got it? Get out, you trash. Understood. I immediately packed my things and left the house. As I left, I heard Mark's voice saying, You are finished too. But I closed the door without saying anything. Apologies to my parents, who were so happy about the marriage, but with nowhere to go. I reluctantly returned to my parents' house. On the way back, 
I signed the divorce papers handed to me and submitted them to City Hall. I also didn't forget to print out all the evidence of the affairs I had overlooked and sent them in an envelope to my in-laws. The next day, I quickly received a call from them. Ginger, is the content of that envelope true? My father-in-law raised his voice at the outset. I'm sorry, Dad, for surprising you like this. After questioning him about the affair the other day, Mark kicked me out of the house. What? And the person in the photos is one of our female employees? Yes, but Mark said, what you took with your phone is not evidence. There is no way he had say that. To let you, Ginger, go through something like this. Leave it to me. I will make sure he pays for this. I'm sorry, Dad. Please take care of it. To be honest, it was a gamble on how my father-in-law would react. He had said he would help, but accepting his son's infidelity, especially as the future company president, was not something that could be easily tolerated. If Mark's infidelity is revealed, my father-in-law's credibility in the company will be at stake. Worst case scenario, it might be swept under the rug. Half expecting the worst, I sent the evidence photos, but it seemed luck was on my side. A few days later, I received a call from Mark after a long time. Hello? Hey, what the hell? Are you kidding me? Making up infidelity to my old man? What the hell are you doing? Do you understand your position? Calm down and stop using weird language. I just reported the despicable actions of the future president. What? Because of you, I got fired from the company, you know. Oh, you got fired? But is that my fault? You snitched on me to my old man, didn't you? I won't forgive you, you scum. You ruined my career. Thanks to you, the chance to be the next president is down the drain. Apparently, my father-in-law took the appropriate steps to deal with Mark. My bet turned out to be a good one. I have nothing but gratitude for my father-in-law. But Mark, on the other hand, has never apologized and continues to abuse me. My anger at him reached its peak. Don't be silly. You still blame others for this situation? All this happened because you cheated on your wife while you were married. How could you say such a thing after betraying me? Hey, hey you. Who are you talking to? You should know your place. What? You're just unemployed now, right? With the title of next president taken away, you've been fired, and there's no show value left in you. Now that your father's connections are gone, you're just an incompetent fool. You're nothing but a piece of trash who hands on to your father's wishes. This. You think you can just say whatever you want? Regardless of what happens, I will never forgive you. I will make you suffer many times more than what I have been through, so be prepared. From now on, you will live without anyone's help forever. For eternity, serve to your right. Hey, wait a minute. The conversation isn't over yet. Goodbye, take care, or rather, struggle on your own, okay? Before he could call me back, I blocked his number. Finally, peace returned to my life. Afterward, I demanded compensation from Mark, who had been fired from the company. His affair partner, also married, ended up paying compensation to her husband as well. Originally, not the saving type, Mark had no significant savings and ended up in debt to pay the compensation. Now, he works multiple part-time jobs, including night shifts at the living factory, struggling to make ends meet. For someone who had grown up without any financial worries as the son of the president, his current life must be unexpected. But I feel no sympathy. It's all the consequence of his own actions. As for me, 
I opened up to my parents, and I ended up staying at home for a while. My mom and dad warmly welcomed me, embracing me gently, saying, "We are glad you are safe." Now I've returned to the flower shop where I used to work, enjoying fulfilling days. Although I've become divorced, I find more than enough happiness without getting married again. The painful past cannot be erased, but I can use it to shape a better future. I aspire to live a better life based on the lessons learned from this experience.